it's me, Buffy the Rain Slayer, and I'm back. I'm here for the fourth and final episode of the May 2022 Weekly Market Insight Series, which is coming directly from our, you guessed it, our Capital Markets Trading Desk. So, FOMC Minutes Fed's release this week was it hawkish again or followed a bit more cautious stance? Let's find out. Interestingly enough, the recently released Fed Minutes didn't show an overly aggressive path to tackle elevated prices. The comments were consistent with previous remarks and indicated that most officials are supportive of two additional half-point increases at the upcoming meetings in June and July. Though central banks remain consistent in their vow to douse inflation, still the financial volatility remained cultivated as the risk of U.S. recession, the impact from China's lockdowns, and the war in Ukraine did not simmer. Equities closed out this week on a chaotic note, however, somehow managed to escape from ending in bear market territory. Technology shares came under pressure globally after major tech giants warned that they would miss second quarter profit and revenue forecasts amid rising interest rates and soaring inflation. So you ask, what else drove the markets this week? Well, let's just go ahead and dive in. Oil rose after U.S. crude and gasoline stockpiles declined further. However, the Biden administration is considering to tap a little used emergency diesel fuel reserve, which contains around 1 million barrels of diesel, to mitigate the supply crunch amid Russia's invasion of Ukraine. As per recent reports of the Commerce Department, the U.S. economy shrank at 1.5% annual pace in the first three months of the year, even though consumers and businesses kept spending at a solid pace. Meanwhile, officials met to discuss the soaring market sentiments on the world economy. The gathering of G7 finance ministers concluded near Germany's bond. In all the leading nations, inflation rates have reached levels not seen for decades, which is causing substantial increases in commodity, energy, and food prices. Finance chiefs of G7 also pledged around 20 billion aid to Ukraine this year as the country struggles to continue functioning amid destruction wrought by Russia's invasion. The World Economic Forum's annual meeting also began on Monday in Davos after a two-year interval due to the pandemic. IMF Chief Kristalina Georgieva acknowledged that risks to the global economy have intensified but pushed back against concerns of a recession. China's central bank and banking regulator urge lenders to boost loans as the economy is battered by COVID outbreaks. The nation will also offer more than $20 billion in tax relief to companies and consumers. Meanwhile, Russia's central bank delivered its third interest rate reduction in just over a month and lowered its benchmark to 11% from 14%. Moreover, borrowing costs can fall further as the nation continues to combat worldwide sanctions. So now, let's talk about what's happening around us. Applications for U.S. unemployment insurance declined last week by more than what was forecast, underscoring a persistently tight labor market. Initial unemployment claims decreased by 8,000 to 210,000 in the week ending May 21st, the Labor Department data showed on Thursday. Orders placed with U.S. factories for durable goods rose 0.4% in April, highlighting firm and sustained demand for equipment and merchandise. Elsewhere, in an unfortunate event, 19 students and two teachers were killed in a mass shooting at an elementary school in Texas on Tuesday. President Joe Biden mourned the killing, decrying their deaths as senseless and demanding action to try to curb the violence. Let's see how our housing market is doing. While mortgage rates fell this week and posted the biggest drop in more than two years, offering home buyers a slight reprieve from this year's massive surge in borrowing costs. However, their rapid rise over the past four months took a toll on the home demand. New home sales, measuring signed contracts, dropped to the lowest level since the start of the pandemic lockdowns. The National Association of Realtors Index of pending home sales fell 1.2%. Mortgage applications also fell 1.2% overall this week. The refinance index was down 4% and the purchase index essentially sidestepped with a 0.2% decline. In conclusion, let me tell you what the FOMC members had to say. Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta President Bostic cracked open the door to discuss a September pause in the central bank's aggressive rate hikes. Whereas St. Louis Fed President James Bullard has almost opposite suggestions on the table, which says the central bank should front load an aggressive series of rate hikes to push rates to 3.5% at year's end. As we can clearly see, there are differences of opinion. We will just have to wait and see how the inflation outlook changes in the meantime and which stands is weighing over the other. So my people, that's all we have for the week. 
I will see you in our June series with more market updates. As usual, stay updated with our news and our trading desk will keep you informed with our pricing incentives. Have a great Memorial Day weekend, everyone. Buffy's out.